Dave, hi, happy Halloween week. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad you're in such a bad mood today. I'm glad to be here with you. <laughs> oh, no. Never could I ever be in a bad mood, Dave. <laughs> People always hate Mondays, but I love Mondays. It's a fresh start of the week, new beginnings, you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen, we're, we're just a few days off from my favorite ho uh, holiday of the year, Halloween. So how can you not be in a good mood in a week <laughs> where it's filled with candy and laughter? Exactly. Hyper, hyper, up to the roof. Oh, my goodness, all the kiddos out there. Yes. And by the way, Dave, do you have a Ouija board behind you because your set looks phenomenal? You have all your Halloween stuff popping and rocking and just... Yeah. What do you mean my set? This is literally my home. This is my... Uh, well, your home this is set, my you know, everyone's virtually doing it these days. So th we all have a little home set. <laughs> right. This is my crystal gazer board. It's actually from the 1920s and 30s. It's funny, on the oh. front, you can communicate with spirits. And when you flip it over, it's got a checkerboard. So you can play games with them once you call them into your home. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Look at there. Me, on the other hand, we have a little purple background going on, and we have some pumpkins thrown out. That's about it for us, you know? <laughs> Very festive, though. Very festive. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So Travel Channel is celebrating Halloween all month long and bringing it home with the Seven Nights of Fright. Ooh, this is so exciting. I love this time of the year, a spine-tingling week of spooky specials. So tell us what we're all in store for, Dave, when we watch on the Travel Channel this week. Well, this week they're pulling out all the stops. All of your favorite paranormal shows are back and they are examining some of the most frightening and bizarre and unusual cases. The Holzer Files, which I'm a part of, launches on this Thursday and we're on right after the Ghost Adventures special. Oh, wow. Two hour examination of Joe Exotic's Haunted Zoo. So you get to watch the Ghost Adventures for two hours mm -hmm. and see their, their crazy off the wall investigation and then join the Holzer Files as we kick off season two investigating the famous case files of Dr. Hans Holzer, the preeminent paranormal investigator. Oh my goodness, well I'm definitely gonna be there. I'm, I'm gonna be tuning in and watching. But you know, more time at home means more reported paranormal activity, which um, I'm sure that excites you. You're like, oh, because you know, you love doing this. This is something you've been doing for a long time, Dave. But you know, what's been so far the craziest thing that has been reported uh, during this pandemic? You know, a lot of people I think are more in tune with the moment, which is something not a lot of us have done for a long time. Mm -hmm. So where a lot of people, and, and you've got that bubbly upbeat looking for the, the sunshine part of, of life. <laughs> That's right. Perfect. That's right. This pandemic is something you can look at as a tragedy, or you can look at it as a time that it brought yeah. me and my family together more. It gave us more time to be introspective, reflective, and I think that if you listen, the spirits are around us all the time. They have stories to be told, things to remind us of where they've been and where we may be going. So it's an important thing that we've, we've tapped into. Nothing that you necessarily have to be afraid of. I think by giving fear over to spirits, they might mess with you. They might try to spook you for fun on their side. But I think this is the time of year when that, that veil is just a little thinner. And if you listen, you might just hear from those that you've lost that you love. And you might hear what history has to tell us. Now, you know, being able to connect with spirits, what is a story that stands out to you that you'll never forget with the connection that you've had with um, spirit? You know, this season of Holzer Files, mm -hmm. I feel we we bring out some of the best paranormal activity you'll ever see, oh, yeah. period, on a paranormal TV show. And I know that sounds biased, and it probably is, but I was blown away by what we caught. One of the locations that stood out for me was Franklin Castle in mm -hmm. Ohio. And because uh, when we were filming there and the spirit we try to communicate with is a young girl who passed away due to complications of diabetes. And I didn't know that until we were there. And it, it turned out to be the anniversary of the date I almost lost my own daughter to diabetes. Oh, and oh no. uh, it got very emotional for me and we were able to make some amazing communication. And I actually have my daughter as a part of that episode help try to, to make that, oh, wow. that connection to the other side. So that was a really powerful story for me, one that I felt on many different levels and, and I'm really proud of what we're able to, uh, to show. Well, I, I, I'm really looking forward to watching that episode, of course. I know that one was um, meaningful to you, but also and, and probably in a little way uh, frightful, you know, because, you know, d just, uh, sure. you know, to kind of have to relive something like that or to think about something like that from the past, you know, that happening, you know, your life. And, you know, I'm thankful that your daughter is here and, you know, she could be able to be part of that episode with you. 
Oh, me too. It's it's an amazing opportunity to reinvestigate these famous case files mm -hmm. and come at them with a 21st century perspective. And, you know, I've been doing a, a radio show called Darkness Radio, talking about the paranormal for 15 years. And uh, I'm, I'm excited that I get to do that with my listeners uh, and take them through the theater of the mind and then do the Holzer files every Thursday to to show them the spiritual side of life and give them a new way to look at the paranormal. A lot of shows really focus on the dark and we go in and want to know the story. We want to know the actual history. Mm -hmm. So we cut through a lot of the fantasy and fable and we get to the phantoms that are left behind. And what is it that their story wants to convey? Well, The Holzer Files, it really is a show to watch on the Travel Channel. Um, it's really such a pleasure to get to speak with you, Dave. Now, real quick, lastly, I do want to ask you, you know, what are you and your family going to do for Halloween this year? You know, the pandemic's going around. I kind of hate it for the kiddos in a way because, you know, some states aren't even letting the kids trick or treat. But you know what, Dave, my little idea that I've been telling everyone all month long is let your kids go trick or treat. Don't let them stick one finger in their little nose or anything or you send them right home. And then once they get home, you let them go and you let them change into their PJs or whatever, and then you throw all that candy away that they got from, you know, door to door, because, you know, you know, you don't know what it might have on it, and then you get the candy that you bought from the store, and you dump it in their bucket, and they'll never know. You know, that's that's a great idea, and, and mm -hmm. it's a way to keep this tradition going and alive. I just hope neighbors are, are still willing to be a, a part of it, and, you know, I've noticed over the years, less and less houses participating in Halloween, which is kind of a shame, because I yeah. feel like it's it's a rite of passage as a child. I used to rush home after school, grab my empty pillowcase, get my buddies, and we would head to the furthest corner of town. And as soon as it was uh, time to start trick-or-treating, we would work our way back that two miles yeah. and, and come back with sacks full of candy. And that camaraderie, that fun, and that community mm -hmm. is really missed today. So that's a great idea. Just tell the kids, don't eat the candy. You'll have fresh, clean, safe candy for them when they get home. Exactly. And hopefully they can do that. But uh, yeah. again, it depends on the family and if there's anybody with uh, compromised immune systems in their roof. You know, you got to be careful with that as well. Yep, that's right, Dave. So, so what? Are, so, what are you and the family going to do for Halloween this year? This year, again, I think it's going to be uh, we're going to head out. There's a very safe um, Halloween trail that we can go on to get our spooks and scares on, and then okay. we'll come back and enjoy some hot cocoa and and uh, maybe watch a good scary movie, eat some of our favorite candy pieces, and just spend it together as a family, which I think is the important part. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that, Dave. Well, Dave, I could talk with you all morning long, but this has been so much fun. I'm so glad. I love when we, I get to do the Halloween interviews with my peeps over there at Premiere. They're just the, the best, and I love Halloween week. It's Halloween week officially because Halloween falls now on a Saturday, which I think all the kids are excited for that because who wants to go to school when it's Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, this this is a big week for Ghost Tober on Travel Channel. So many amazing right. paranormal shows are back, and uh, people are going to love them. Tune in, support the channel. If you love a good scare, then this is the week for you. Absolutely, indeed. Dave, thank you so much. You're the best. It was a pleasure to get to meet you. Thank you, Noah. We'll talk again, I hope. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Maybe in person someday. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.